I received the following mail. We have recently developed our own USB high speed isolator for industrial use such as to protect ECUs on prototype cars from BMW and Porsche. Would you be interested in testing one from an audio standpoint? Yes, I would. Digital audio transport over USB knows many potentially big problems. A polluted power line, an earth potential, incorrect impedances, poorly shaped signals and so on. A device like the Sonora Micro Rendu combined with an audiophile po power supply tackles all of these. Galvanic separation, reshaping, reclocking and a clean power line resulting in a very clean USB signal. See the link in the top right corner for the review. The Oldec ADQ USB on review here offers galvanic separation and cleaning up the power line. The galvanic separation is done by transformer, the power line by a DC-DC converter that can provide up to 300 milliampers. There also is a provision for an external power supply if more current is needed. The ADQ USB is a small aluminium box with rubberized ends measuring 90 by 62 by 32 mm. It has a USB B host connection on one side and a USB A device connection and a 5 volt power input on the other side. It supports USB 2.0 up to 480 megabits per second and is downwards compatible with USB 1.0 and 1.1. As said, it was designed for other applications, but who cares? It solves problems USB connections can have and the USB bus doesn't care less what the data represents. I had to think about how to judge the performance of the LDAC and came to this plan. Under ideal conditions, no earth potential and a clean power line, the LDAC when inserted should not change the sound. For in this case both the galvanic separation and the clean up of the power line is not needed and the LDAC should be fully transparent. When this is the case and the separation circuits work fine, the device does what it claims and can improve the sound wherever there is an earth potential problem or dirty power lines. This is what Oldex Chris said about the ADQ USB. We paid close attention to every detail, such as double power filtering of both the isolation barrier and the power jack where an external power supply can be connected. Of course digital lines are isolated as well and the PCBs are each measured for the correct impedance. That sounds like genuine German engineering. Since the micro render provides the cleanest USB signal I have ever heard in my set and the Cord Hugo has a sensitive USB input, I connected the ADQ USB in between those two to hear if the sound changed. It didn't, so the ADQ USB seems to be transparent. Then I used the NuForce Micro DAC 3 connected to a Raspberry Pi or Mac Mini alternatively and started to cause earth loops. When the ADQ USB was inserted, it did make the sound more relaxed with a far cleaner high end. Mind you, the MicroDeck 3 is powered over USB. I also connected the iFi iPower, but that hardly improved the sound. I also connected the S-Boost BTOW power supply to the power input of the LDAC, despite the fact that it costs more than the MicroDeck 3 and the ADQ USB together. That gave only a slight improvement over the iFi power supply and then only with very critical music. So does the LDAC ADQ USB improve the sound? No, but it was never intended to do that. It was carefully designed not to change the sound. But it can solve problems that deteriorate the sound in two ways. It solves earth loops by galvanic separation and it decouples the power supply or lets you use an external power supply and even prevents both from short circuiting. Solving one or more of these problems make these problems no longer deteriorate the sound and thus make your stereo sound better. 
the ADQ USB does this without altering the sound itself which proves it wor it's the work of a professional. I love metaphors and wanted to use the following. There is no need for a paracetamol if you have no headache. Until I realized this didn't hold since you should not take medicine when not needed. Well, there's no problem in using the ADQ USB when not needed since it doesn't seem to have any influence on a clean signal. It's just a waste of the approximately 200 euros including VAT, 169 excluding VAT for those outside Europe. But if you do have any of the aforementioned problems, it's a steal. If you've liked this review and want to stay informed, follow my Facebook or Google Plus page or my Twitter account. You can also post questions there, but please don't ask me for buying advice. View my questions video to find out why, the link is in the top right corner. You'll find more information below this video on YouTube. If you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and tell your friends on the web about it. I am Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.